Our talk business correspondent, Carrie Jackson Case, sat down recently with Joyce Elliott, a state senator from Little Rock, to discuss her candidacy. You were the very first candidate to announce as soon as Congressman Snyder announced his resignation, which speaks to a certain amount of confidence in your candidacy. Tell me why you felt like this was the time, this was when you should run for this seat. It is because I've always known this would be the time. I have said to Congressman Snyder for years and to anybody else who would stand still for a moment and listen, that when he um, retires from that office, I was definitely going to run. But I've always been intending to run for office since I was 10 years old. And uh, so when I've had a chance to serve at the state level, I, the next level obviously is um, uh, at the national level. So there was hardly anything for me to think about other than how I was going to separate from my job and be able to make a living. And so that's the thing I had to get worked out. But um, there was just no hesitancy for me regardless of what anybody else was going to do. I didn't need to run a poll. I didn't need to run a focus group because I, you know, this is what I'm hardwired to do. So I knew right away and I didn't play games about if I were going to or if I were not because people needed to know that I was determined to do this. In the race two years ago when mm -hmm. Obama was running, there was much made of him being the first African-American mm -hmm. president. Right. If you were elected to this office, mm -hmm. you would be the first African-American elected to a congressional or a Senate seat. Yes. Yeah. What does that say to you about Arkansas that be, is the only Southern state who has not yet elected an African American to a federal office. I find it profoundly interesting and a history of which I am not proud. That I don't think Arkansas is either because every uh, former Confederate state, every Southern state has elected a person who's African American, um, at least one, and in many states of course more than that, um, to Congress. And while I would never say that somebody should vote for me because I'm an African American or because I'm a woman, neither one of those things is the case, it, it, it is true though that I think it would erase um, uh, a blot on our history. And people could actually do that, if I must say so myself, with a person who is absolutely qualified because I'm confident and that I am qualified and I, I have a record of working in the House and Senate that uh, everybody can see that that's the case should they decide to study it. And I've, I've had a record of working with groups across all kind of party lines and all kind of ideological lines and, and searching for balance. And so it, it, is, it is a question I get asked about a great deal. And I think it, it's important to the young people in this state, not just African-American young people, but to all, all kids in this state and, and younger people you know, like you and others who maybe aspire to politics that, you know, we don't have these boundaries. And, and when we get an opportunity to remove a boundary without any kind of sacrifice, in my estimation, uh, we, we should consider that. But, you know, as I, I will repeat, that's mm -hmm. not the reason, but it certainly is added value uh, that we would be able to remove that, that block from our history. Speaking of your record, uh -huh. uh, you, this publication, the print version of this publication, Talk mm -hmm. Business, uh, named you one of the nine best legislators in mm -hmm. the past session. Mm -hmm. And in that, it, uh, you were referred to as the Don Quixote of yes. the legislature. <laughs> yes, yes. That you took on unpopular causes, mm -hmm. that, you took, that you pretty much would tilt at windmills with yes. immigration reform mm -hmm. and a variety of mm -hmm. other causes, right. earning you the title of liberal. Yes, yes. And yeah. uh, in a yeah. lot of places, that is considered a dirty word. Yeah, it, it really is interesting. And anybody who, I guess, even begins to label me with being a liberal and having some idea of what it means, I hope they will take their definition and then go and look at my record and, and, just, and ask yourself, now, just what is it that she did that made her a liberal? And then look at all the causes that I have, that I have espoused, that I've stood for. So what about those causes is bad? And if it's these causes that's been designed to help working people, to help students, to make sure that kids who are poor have access to uh, insurance and health care through our kids, uh, if these are the causes that makes her liberal, that's designed to help everyday people, you know, what would be bad about that? If, if, if what she has done to advance the rights of women and what she's done to make sure that businesses have an opportunity in this state, small businesses, 
what about this is liberal? If what she's done to protect the drinking water, if that's not in the public interest, then what is? So I think people really need to challenge themselves when they put that word out there with their own definition as something that's bad. Because in a lot of ways, I think people are just repeating something because they think perhaps it's a bad thing, and some people as a good thing. So it's not just those people who are who are being negative. Um, but there is a difference between representing and leading. And if all one ever does is represents, you are not serving, I think, the purpose of your being in office. Because it's my responsibility to represent as much as I can the beliefs and the thoughts of my, my uh, constituency. But you also must be a leader and think about what do I need to do to help Arkansas be better? What do I need to do to help my country be, uh, do better? And your purpose in being in office should not be just to get reelected, but it should be to try to make differences in big ways to help the most people. And that's been my philosophy on, on what I've done, you know, in the House and in the Senate. You say that your purpose should not only to be reelected. That's right. What one issue, what is your core issue mm -hmm. that if it cost you this election, mm -hmm. you could not change? your mind on? I could not I could not change my mind on taking away civil rights or denying civil rights to people. I mean that that is something that that I just cannot deal with. Anybody who pays their taxes, they serve their country, they do everything we ask them to do and then deny them civil rights. I mean that crosses the line for me. I cannot for example um, I think education is a civil right. I, I absolutely cannot by thinking that uh, it's okay to say some kids deserve this kind of education, some another, that is not adequate. If somebody were to ask me to support um, taking away education from one group of kids for the advantage of another or denying a child access to a good quality education, that crosses the line for me. Um, and and you, you shouldn't have too many of those because if, if you have too many things for which there are just, there's just not compromise, um, right. Then you, then you become ineffective. But you need to have some core things that you know that will define where you stand, and I will not go past this. And so, you know, when it comes to civil rights more than anything else, I, I'm just, I just can't uh, even imagine taking away and denying those rights. Is health care a civil right? Yeah, I think health care is a civil right. I think it is absolutely a civil right because in this country, um, that's one of the reasons I, su I support the idea of health care. Because in this country where we're called the United States of America, it, it, there are times when we, we need to act in a united fashion. And what happens to you, what happens to your health care will affect me. Uh, it will affect, in the, in the long run, I, I think that the, the health of the entire country to be a viable democracy. So to say that some people will have health care because they're lucky enough and others will not, that's one of the things I think defines a core value in this country. Healthcare, I can't think of, of many things that are more of a core value than that because it says so much about who we are if we're willing to allow some people to not have health healthcare and be satisfied that others do. So yeah, I, I think it is very much a civil right. It doesn't mean that everybody should just get it for free and that we don't all need to put some skin in the game, we should. But this is the place where we need to make sure we have the underpinnings so that everybody can have opportunity for, for good health care, just as other countries do with whom we compete. Because not having that health care is an absolute drain on this country that other countries don't have to face. And what if we didn't have that drain? I mean, how much better could we be?